Hello students. In this topic, we are going to look at various novel drug delivery systems. The purpose of developing, formulating, designing novel drug delivery system is to target the drug to its specific site. Drug targeting is nothing but the delivery of drugs to the receptors, cells, tissues, organs or any specific part of the body to which the drug is to be delivered exclusively. And it is this targeting of drugs that determines the drug's therapeutic index, which is measured by its pharmacological response and safety. The drug's therapeutic index determines whether the drug interacts with the candidate receptor and there is minimal interaction with non-target tissues. Thus, targeting drug targeting or site-specific delivery of drugs is a very attractive proposition because this is one of the most potential ways to improve the therapeutic index of the drugs. Drug delivery, uh, drug carrier systems are thus required to target the drugs to their site of action. In the topic of novel drug delivery systems, we are henceforth going to look at several such delivery systems which are responsible for enclosing the drug, acting as carriers for the drug and delivering the drug to specific sites or targets. Let us first look at the advantages of such novel drug delivery systems. Such delivery systems help in, the reduct help in reduction in the number and frequency of the doses that are required to maintain the therapeutic response. These delivery systems reduce the total amount of drug that is administered over the period of drug treatment. This is because the drug reaches the site of action and drug is not available for interaction at other sites and receptors. Because the drug is targeted to specific sites, reduction in blood level fluctuation of the drug is seen. Also, as the dose is reduced, there is a reduction in the incidence and severity of both local and systemic side effects. Next, the drug protects, the drug is protected by, from first pass metabolism as well as gastrointestinal tract degradation. Further, the drug molecule can be targeted towards the tissue or organ and this leads to reduction in overall toxicity to normal tissues. There is an increased efficiency of the drug because of targeting as well as site-specific delivery is achieved. Because of all these reasons, there is an overall reduction in toxicity and the side effects manifested. Due to this, shorter hospitalization times and increased convenience of administration of such delivery systems has been reported. Also, Workable, feasible treatment for previously incurable diseases has been reported. There is a potential of use of such novel drug delivery systems for not only therapeutic use, but also for prophylactic application. So overall, there is long-term healthcare benefit because of reduction of cost in the short run, in the short term as well as in the long run. Thus, drug targeting is the exclusive delivery of drugs to receptors or organs of the body and result in reduction of overall toxicity, improvement of drug therapeutic index, more specifically in case of proteins and peptide drugs. Targeted delivery of drugs can be classified into active mechanism and passive mechanism. As we go ahead, we will look at what is active targeting, passive targeting, as well as examples specific to both these categories. Active targeting involves the use of biological molecules for targeting of the drug to the receptor site. 
and this is the most important and most viable approach that has been found to be very useful. The concept of magic bullets for targeting was laid down by the cell biologist Paul Elrich and he says that bodies which possess a particular affinity for a certain organ or a carrier can bring therapeutically active groups to the organ in question. And this was a statement that was made by him in 1898. Several biological molecules have been used for targeting of the drug to specific sites. It has been seen that if the antigens are directed to antigen presenting cells by coupling with a ligand which has a strong affinity for molecules of the major histocompatibility complex, then this approach can be used for delivery of synthetic peptides as well as small recombinant uh, antigens. This approach has been used wherein antibodies that are directed against the cell surface antigens have been coupled with the drug and have been targeted. In vitro studies of antigen presentation to, two, uh, to T cells indicates the efficiency of presentation can be enhanced thousandfold. So, as you can see, simple coupling of antibodies to the uh, antigen will result in direction of the of the drug to the T cells and the efficiency of the drug increases thousandfold. Lectins, which are endogenous carbohydrate binding proteins, act at on uh, the tumor cells. These have been detected in a variety of tumor cells and have been utilized for better clinical management of tumors by a selective lectin mediated uptake of therapeutically active glycoproteins by the infected cells. Here, the carrier potential of the glycoproteins can be exploited to direct the drug to certain cell types. Thus, drugs bound to lectins have been found to be very effective in acting on the cancerous cells. Similarly, hormones have been used as carrier cells for drug since they have receptors on specific target cells. Also, low molecular weight proteins accumulate in the proximal tubular cells of the kidney and thus they are important tools for renal drug targeting. Thus, these examples of antibodies, lectins, hormones, and glycoconjugates have demonstrated their efficacy in functioning as targeting moieties. And if the drug is coupled to these moieties, then they help to the drug to reach the receptor site. So whether it is the antibodies which can enhance the efficacy of the drug thousandfold or whether it is lectins which have a high drug loading capacity and can be used instead of antibodies, Several such molecules have been found to be important carriers and help fulfill the target of active target, uh, ta help in fulfilling the target of actively targeting the drug molecules to the receptor sites. Let us now look at some examples of low molecular weight proteins which accumulate in the proximal tubular cells of the kidney and are therefore interesting candidates for renal drug targeting. One of the proteins uh, that was uh, administered was lysozyme as a carrier for the drug captopril. Captopril, captopril is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor and when conjugated with lysozyme and administered to the rats. The concentration of captopril that was achieved in the kidney was found to be 5 to 6 times higher as compared to the administration of free captopril. Similarly, dextran has been investigated for its intestinal absorption behavior in view of its receptor mediated transportation. Dextran possesses a high potential as an oral drug carrier for several drugs. Also, insulin has been examined as an enzyme carrier for correcting 
enzyme deficiency disease in fibroblast the enzymes was conjugated with insulin and thus targeted to fibroblast resulting in increase in the free cholesterol level next we look at targeting of drugs using the passive approach in this approach the drug is entrapped inside a particulate carrier device and physically localizes at target sites so you have these delivery systems which are physically able to entrap engulf or absorb the drug and these are targeted to several receptor sites or cellular sites by virtue of their size or lipophilicity or some other characteristic such delivery systems can be administered orally or intravenously the most common well researched examples of such drug delivery carriers include nanoparticles lipozymes microspheres and several others these carriers are used to target the drugs to liver or endothelial cells or to sites of inflammation or even to lymph nodes several of these examples we will be studying in the topics that come ahead of this chapter microspheres are orally administered and these are taken up by the pierce patches and are delivered to the lymphoid organs they thus help in delivery of the drug to the lymphoid organs because they are able to protect the protein drugs these also help in reducing the degradation of protein drug and they can be used for targeting drugs to the pulmonary region liposomes are bilayered structures which are made up of phospholipids because they are structurally similar to cell membranes these get localized within the macrophages and can be used to deliver bioactive agents to the macrophages they are taken up immediately by the macrophages and if we want them to be long acting then they have to be their uptake has to be delayed by giving a layer uh, by a protective layer of peg the pro, by the process called as pegylation liposomes are used to target intracellular infections because liposomes can be taken up by the cells where they are broken down and they release the drug that is entrapped within the liposomes liposomes are a very important and interesting concept which is a separate topic in our syllabus and we will discuss as we go ahead nanoparticles or particles whose size in the is in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers are colloidal drug carriers which can be administered either orally or intravenously thus helping to achieve higher concentrations in the organs because they are not removed immediately by the defense mechanisms of the body they circulate in the body for a long period in the systemic circulation for a long period of time and they are able to enter the various receptor sites and the target organs by virtue of their size or by virtue of the surface modification thus we have looked at the active and the passive approaches to targeting of drugs to the receptor sites receptor organs we have also looked at the benefits that are accrued by use of novel drug delivery systems for more information on this topic you can refer the uh, book advances in controlled and novel drug delivery by nk jain the chapter on targeted delivery of drugs gives excellent information about targeting of drugs as well as advantages of novel drug delivery systems thank you